Good afternoon. We're so glad you're here. We daily vlog, so if you enjoy this video, we hope that you'll return to us tomorrow. We started a little bit before the workday ended just because I wanted to vlog a little bit at home. Whether we end up vlogging more at home tonight or not. Right. I just felt like I missed vlogging at home. Yeah. And I meant to, I wanted to start actually vlogging like this morning, but my day was kind of crazy. I had a, I had a million short meetings. And curfew is earlier tonight in Orlando. It's at 8 p.m. We'll talk about that later, I'm sure. Yeah, and so I got, I got qualms. And, um, and so you will be home a little bit earlier, so we'll hopefully do a little bit more at home tonight. Yeah. Another makeshift dinner because we have not gone grocery shopping yet. We're going tonight. You're going tonight? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm making fried rice. So this is cooked rice we already had from yesterday. I fried up some celery and onion because it's the only vegetables we have. Um, some vegetable stock and then some soy sauce. We're getting foggy. Um, and your garlic, ginger, all that. I also put some lime juice on it. I'm cooking it on a high heat so that it gets a little bit crispy on the bottom, like flattened it all out. And now I'm gonna make like some sort of pizza. I'm getting a Pepsi. <laughs> With just like tomatoes and like I'm gonna make a buttery roux basil concoction. <laughs> One of the best sounds in the whole world. Look at this, 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 look at this. I'm gonna cut it up and we're gonna eat it and it's gonna be delicious. Alright, it's five o'clock. I'm done working. Sarah's gonna drive me downtown. Um there's another protest at City Hall. I wanted to follow the guys I've been following because like I I hooked up with one of them on on Instagram and he's like openly um advocating and announcing where he's leading protests. But it's just it's like pretty far it's like more than 10 miles further southwest it's, it's like we're north of orlando and this is like very far southeast orlando and i want to go where they are but um it would I'm, I'm nervous about the roads getting to and from or more so from tonight with the closures they've been seeing on the highways and everything and it just i know i can get to city hall sooner and still protest before curfew gets in place so it won't be as much protesting today, but still going out, still voicing our our solidarity with everything. So we're gonna hit going, right? Yes. Ahmaud Arbery and the loss of far too many black the lives. The President Obama live stream starting for Sarah's not missing a moment of it a while we drive. The street early. I'm heading to City Hall. Only got two and a half, three hours to protest. I'm almost at City Hall. Interesting, they have like cop cars blocking off each intersection going down Orange Avenue, but you could still go east west across the intersection. Um, no opinion there, just interesting to notice a different tactic by the, the law enforcement group to I think, mitigate the protesting. So, um, I think it's a uh, it's interesting. I like I was, I've been saying for days now, yesterday's protests were anticipated to be larger. And these like protests are happening every day, all over the place. But yesterday it was very organized, which I think caused the big numbers. There's still great numbers. I think there's about 400 people here at City Hall right now as I approach it. Um, but I think maybe the municipality thought that it'd be something similar to yesterday. Um, well, they're just being cautious. Either way, beautiful out, listening in my rain. Good crowd. From what I saw on Twitter, there's been a lot of speeches and prayers going on. Um, I know some other groups in other areas near Windermere, um, Dr. Phillips, and of course the group I almost I almost met up with in the southwest or southeast corner of Orlando over on uh, Curry Ford. So just a good day. Good day. See we've got all the streets blocked off. Smaller police presence but also significantly smaller protest presence. I am home and I just finished up that panel that was led by President Obama. I texted Peter something I wanted to remember 
and share. It was kind of simple, actually. Um, protest is what creates pressure so policy can get passed. And I just really, I really enjoyed that. I think that the panel was great information for why we have to start locally if we want change. Um, actually, I'll show you something that I posted on the Facebook group. If you're not a member of our little discussion group on Facebook, it's always linked in the description. Um, so that's where Peter had posted it. And then one of the things that they covered on is talking to your mayor, like email your mayor to review their active use of force policy with members of the community. And so when you are going to your mayor, you know, they should respond or at least somebody in their office should respond and just asking them to commit to uh, a plan to review and to possibly change things um, that's like really really small but makes a big impact so I thought that that was really good I actually just ordered some birthday treats on over to the air hearts it's Carolyn's birthday um, and so I'm excited to hear when they arrive there and then I'm gonna put on 13th which is a documentary on um, racism in America, specifically having to do with the um, incarceration of black Americans and just overall, like, the prison system. I mean, I have to watch it to really to really get a grip on it, um, but it's been on a lot of the lists on how we can educate ourselves if we are feeling like we need to educate ourselves. So that's what I'm going to do until Peter makes his way home. I'm home. Sarah picked me up. We were going to go to Aldi, but it closed at 8. Um, protests were good. They were low-key. I didn't have as much time, and they ended earlier because of the curfew, which we'll still point out later. But tonight, we're experiencing the longevity piece of this. And this is the part where, like, I don't know if you, many of you were surprised by us going to the protest. I don't know if you guys were surprised that we had continued to go to the protest. Um, and I think there, that's going to be continued to be a thing until they settle. There will be a day that the protests settle. And protests are only effective if there's good leadership and change and policy change enacted from them. So Sarah actually signed up for a, um, to be on the phone um, to listen in. And I think, but that, I, don't, I, think, I don't know if she submitted a question or not, but there is a nationwide NAACP town hall going on right now and actually I don't know the woman who's making opening remarks was the first female chief of police here in Orlando and now she's a state representative so she's like I grew up a black woman I enforce the laws in Florida and now I make the laws for the country um, so she's just giving opening remarks so we're gonna have some sneaky snacks I'm probably gonna end up playing with Eve because she looks like she needs to be played with Neck restraint policies. We're talking about neck restraint. Any restraint above the shoulders of any kind. To. Are you filming me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Did you say what we were listening to? Yeah. Um, that is one of the things that they can pass is a neck restraint policy, so that that is not allowed. Are you okay? Nope. Whoa! 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 147 in the morning. That is way too late. Today is June 3rd, Wednesday. Today's quote is by Alice Morse Earl. Every day may not be good, but there's something good in every day. Very important right now. Okay, we're going to bed. Um, we started watching this documentary called 13 or 13th. Gives you a different perspective on American history. Insightful into what is going on these days. It's good to be home. Hello, it's Peter and Sarah from the future. Um, we realized yesterday in the vlog we kept on saying that we were gonna talk about curfew and we never did. But it's fairly simple. The curfew was changed from 10 p.m. to 8 p.m. And we felt as though it wasn't necessary because everything had been peaceful. And that does limit the time that a peaceful protest then can take place. Yeah. And I know, like, other people had pointed out to us online that, like, we don't know what kind of things the the municipality had heard that could have driven that, but... And we in, understand that in, like, the peaceful protest can't happen without police. Like, that's how yeah, we, that's society how we, functions. Yeah. Like, 
you let them know that you're protesting and then they keep you safe. Yeah, and that's why like... We, or that's like the main, like the main goal is that both sides are understanding and both... And that's why I bring peace. up, that's why I bring up the past couple of days how like um, the guy that's been kind of leading the majority of the, the protests or marches I've been to, like him and his friends are like now friendly and like, like have open conversation with the police because we'll be marching like it looks like when you look at those videos that we're just marching aimlessly around the city um, but in reality the cops will tell the cops like where we want to go and they're like okay that's great give us five minutes and they'll start closing down it so we can safely and peacefully march around the city so it's just the open communication between the the police and the and the protesting groups that are super important and the announcement that, and the, the the reason why I had like a slight issue with the move up of time is that the the mayor references there being issues the other night when the crowds got big later in the evening as the reason why to reduce or move up the curfew by two hours. So to me, it felt like um, they were moving up, they were removing two more hours of time for people to peacefully protest and for the people who are still working won't get off till five to get to a protest till six. Right, sometimes you have to travel. People, you can't just leave at curfew. You have to leave before curfew because things, the the cops have started doing arrests and people have like the people that aren't there for the right reasons in the protests start acting out sometimes at curfew. So like, in, like I've been leaving protests in the, at pretty much an hour before curfew. So if the curfew is at eight, I leave at seven, but I don't get there till five. I can't leave until five, so I don't get there till five thirty. Is like it just seemed to me? It seemed from like from my perspective of being in downtown Orlando for five five days of protesting now. Um, if to me it felt like it was just removing two hours to remove two hours of protesting. Yeah. The sun doesn't even go down until after eight p.m. Um, and as you've seen, Peter's been a part of peaceful protests that have gone into the evening into you know closer to 10 and so again it was just like a frustrating limitation when orlando has been such a role model yeah. for peaceful protests and one little caveat if you look at the area for anybody who's local to orlando because pe some people online were like why can't you just leave because it's only a certain radius in downtown orlando that you have to be out by eight and some people were like well, why can't you protest downtown until eight and then just cross the street um, the northern border and the eastern border of that downtown route, the police would not allow um, the protesting groups to march out of. So those same streets, when there was a 10 o'clock curfew two days ago, we tried walking down Colonial. The police refused to let us walk down Colonial, and then the police refused to let the group go east of Summerlin Road, um, which are the barriers there. Why? I don't know. Like I said, they were just maybe probably trying to keep us within an area. But it's not like for the protesting group to work in a confident way and a, a, a give and take way with the police. We have to listen to them. Right. And that's what curfew just shapes that. Yeah. And, um, and so that was our take on it as Peter had experienced it. And that is that. And the curfew is still 8 o'clock tonight. And. Um, but I've seen some petitions to ask yeah. the mayor to remove it. Okay. Or at least change it back to 10. Yeah. So, and we'll see how that goes, yeah. and hopefully, you got to peacefully protest, and you have to, to peacefully voice your concerns with exactly. what things are. You don't just break the curfew. I still listen to the curfew. What you do is you get enough people to ask to change it. And there is that.